I gotta be on here for for a little while because oh, I got I class in the morning. Quick. Radio Free America, and this is Uncle Sam with music and the truth until dawn. Right now, I've got a few words for some of our brothers and sisters in the occupied zone. The chair is against the wall. The chair is against the wall. John has a long mustache. John has a long mustache. It's 12 o'clock, Americans, another day closer to victory. And for all of you out there on or behind the line, this is your song. <laughs> Welcome everybody to, uh, I don't know what to call this, we're calling this an updated uh, or special edition to the Daily Gun Show. And we've got a bunch of people who attended the Tulsa Gun Show, the world's largest gun show this last week and last week, last weekend, and uh, are all from gun channels. They Most of them are doing some sort of online content uh, at various levels. And uh, we wanted to have a discussion about the experience at the show from the content creators angle and strategize a bit on uh, some after action, some how this show went and then looking forward to uh, attending shows in the future. You've got NRA coming up in weeks. We've got the uh, Tulsa show coming up in November. We've got other events that bring the industry together and those of us who appreciate our role as new media, as individuals who lend our, our contribution to the conversation about guns out there. Um, let's talk not so much about the experience, but about uh, our uh, efforts there as content creators, or your efforts there as content creators, I just experienced this time. Uh, and I just wanted to give you guys a forum for that. Uh, but I'll shut up and introduce everybody. Well, I guess I'll introduce everybody and then shut up and let it be your show. We got Cycle Camp jumping in. You visited Tulsa from uh, Connecticut. We got Ghost jumping in from Arkansas. Uh, Gizzard jumped in, is jumping in from Kansas, who uh, well, I'm quit saying everybody went to the show. Dano jumped in, is jumping in from Illinois. Obnoxious from North Carolina. Roll Call from Indiana. Sarge also from North Carolina. And Snob just across the street almost from the show. Um, again, I'm giving you guys a platform to uh, have a talk. Let's try to keep it on the content creators um, experience at the show. And thanks for being there. Thanks for being our eyes and ears at the show and, and for taking the show from that building out to the Internet. I guess I'll start it with that, and I'll just shut up here for real and say this is an effort at interactive media here. So the people that are watching this are uh, using the Internet, so use those text chats that are out there on gunchannels.com and on that other platform that we're running this on, which is our biggest soapbox, but we know that they hate guns and they hate our property, they hate our laws that we appreciate. I'm really shutting up. It's your show. Go. So, I guess it's your show. Go. I'm Y'all going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. Um, yeah, enjoyed the show a lot this year. I thought it was a great show this year. I don't know what everybody else thought that they've been there to more than one, but I definitely enjoyed the show and had good. I thought I had a real good luck and good luck getting content and making connections. So, I'll let somebody noticed, else talk. I've noticed uh, uh, this is my third show, and that each show is slightly different than either the one before or the one after. So they're not necessarily all exactly the same thing. They generally have commonalities, but they're not necessarily the exact same thing. And so people who, uh, who have been there once, they uh, just need to be aware that, yeah, they may get whether it's 70 or 80% of the same, but it's not going to be 100% of the same if you come back. As well as you can go up and down the aisles all you want. You will never see everything. Oh, Even absolutely. though you've gone up and down and looked on both sides. Oh, yeah. You you got to, I guess you kind of got to just accept you're going to have to glance at a lot of things. And if something catches your eye, then you go back in and really, you know, comb through it and then move on. Oh, so yeah. how many how many of you guys there was there your first time at Wanamaker? Sarge and I. So, so not just what you think, was it what you expected initially? Oh, not not at all. I, I was I was woefully unprepared for how big it is, and that's that's my main thing that I've been telling everybody is that no matter how big you think it is, it it's bigger. No matter how many times somebody tells you it's it's huge and you just can't get the, you know, you just can't get the grasp of it, <clears throat> not until you walk in that door, 
and you see a you know that big big beautiful buffet laid out in front of you do you realize how big it is until you've walked those aisles for a day and you've seen you know a third of it maybe so that was that was the biggest thing for me was just how big it was i tell you what i learned fairly quick is that you've got to combine your content creating and your uh shopping in one venture you have to go start combing the aisles looking for things that you want to buy looking for things that you've been trying to collect and when something catches your eye you switch into con content creator mode speak with them record what what you want to record the interview and then get rolling again as far as uh consuming because if not you can't do both adequately and i learned that a little bit late but that's okay it's the first and, trip there and and i learned it even later in sarge but i can verify that 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 is true <laughs> we had a bunch of people come from like all over the country and like you guys drove a lot so i can't flew down from connecticut but for someone who hasn't been there before has been thinking about it and this goes for anyone in the chat i mean what would you say to someone say is it worth going to Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. If, yeah, absolutely. if if you're a gun guy, if you're a con you know, if you're content, whether you're content creator or not, if you're if you're a gun guy or a gun gal, then you need to go. That's that's, I mean, that's all there is to it because it's it's far and above any possible gun show that you've ever been to before. And maybe if you're one of those people that are absolutely only into the latest, newest guns. It may not be the best thing in the world for that. I mean, there's a lot of that there, but there's a lot more mill serves, collector items, stuff like that. There's still plenty for everybody. But maybe if you're only into new guns, have no cares in the world about old guns, which I don't know who you are, but you know that might be the only person that wouldn't just love the show. Real cool. What was the what was your favorite thing that you saw there? Not as a content creator, but as a as a gun person, what was the best thing you saw there? Uh, I was really impressed with a lot of the AR parts, guys. There's a lot more this year than there was ever last year. I think I ran into oh, 12 to 13 tables that had AR parts. Last year, there wasn't that many. There was the people that are always there where you can build your AR and watch them build it. But there was so many other people like, down in well, I call it the pit. Down on that lower level, I found these people called KM. I think they're called KM Tactical. Let me see. Let me. See. Yeah, KM Tactical. Uh, I never saw them there last year, but that could be because I didn't run into them. But they had. I, I bought most of my AR parts from them. They had a ton of stuff. Uh, there's just a lot of lot of AR stuff there, and. Like Sarge said, you know, I tried to get my shopping in. Like, as soon as I walked in the door, I went to, you know, certain parts and hurry up and got that stuff before, you know, noon. Because usually noon is when people start, you know, taking off and going to lunch. But there's a lot of AR stuff, more more, more so than last year. So that, that was really impressive. I'd tell you that one of the cool things, I obviously couldn't make it um, a couple weeks ago uh, for, for different reasons, but... Um, people don't realize that there's some cool things that have been started about a year ago uh, that we'll have for th up from three ninety nine all the way up to maybe six ninety nine different levels, different you know levels of quality. But they have build your own ARs there. You could literally go pay three ninety nine and walk away with an AR. So I think that's kind of cool as well. Right. Uh, something I like to go ahead and I mentioned this before we went on air, uh, and that's an opportunity. And I was not aware of it actually until tonight uh, that uh, we collectively missed. Uh, and I would, if I would have known about this six weeks ago, I would have done something about it, is uh, Tony from New, New Jersey who who runs or is in charge of uh, Tony Says Training. I forget if it's .org or, or what the full name of the website is. And he's a runs pro Second Amendment organization out in New Jersey, uh, <laughs> sells uh, T-shirts. But he also sells uh, T-shirts that uh, I'm screen sharing one right now. I don't know if you can highlight my screen or not. But uh, if we collectively, for $10 each, could have purchased one of these before the show, because he stated his goal was to get these shirts out on social media, so that people, like Instagram, so that people could see it and say, and, and say, oh, 
uh, that, that not only pr promotes the Second Amendment, also helps promote his organization, and it's a win-win situation, and it's only 10 bucks. And that's something that also would have made us collectively stand out as a group because we all would have been wearing the same shirt for 10 bucks. And I think there's a lot of upside there. And I know uh, G Webs knows a lot more about uh, uh, Tony Simon and uh, and his efforts in New Jersey than I certainly do. I would happen to be watching an interview with him. It was a multi-hour interview on Hank Strange tonight, uh, prior to to coming on here tonight. Uh, but you know, as well as I've heard him interviewed, I, I know G Webs has has interviewed him in the past as well as several other people who happen to be here. And I think he's, he certainly sounds like a great guy and certainly doing. Uh, or, you know, great things out in New Jersey. But I think it's something that would benefit us collectively. And I don't know if it's too late or not to do that for NRA, or we just mark that off as something we do at, you know, come this fall or, or some other time, but it's something worth remembering. And that's my yeah. two cents. Yeah, Tony's a great guy. He's got the 2A for Everyone podcast. Uh, his website is diversityshoot.com. So go, definitely go check him out. Cycle, what'd you buy this year? Nope, we're done with that. Maybe ghosted in here, but this is not just another. Let's talk about Tulsa. You guys well, uh, went to Tulsa, okay. yeah. So that's why I'm cutting it off. We're uh, talking about what Gun Channels did at Tulsa and how, as a team, we can cover the show better. So this one is not so much what Tulsa was about. You guys are going to be covering that. Uh, how can we? You know, did some of you guys are talking about getting a house in Indiana? Would that have been a better thing? Uh, tools, internet connections. I'd like to talk about how we together can attack the show and be more useful for each other and for the second amendment. Sorry, I just I've got a suggestion. Okay. I've got a suggestion. Why, why don't we um, pre-set up like when we're going to go live from the show, like at set times, like, I don't know, like 10 and two or 12 and four. And just we'd set to go live for like 30 minutes or an hour. And whoever was there jumped on and that, I think that would be cool to do kind of like a live broadcast from there. That would that would definitely help with you know getting getting some more of the live <clears throat> the live stuff out. Now uh, Woods had a question about uh, um, is there anything that you wish you would have brought or forgot and thought you wouldn't need because that would help. I think a lot a lot of the guys got caught with the uh, lack of power. Would have been nice if we had a. a you know, a, a big ass battery pack or that kind of thing to help people recharge and all that. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Do they make like a big community power charge, like a cooler size thing or something that I guess maybe one of those things to charge a car? Oh, that makes, yeah, you could use a jump box with plug ins or something. I never even mm -hmm. thought about that. I have a jump box with plug ins. I could have brought the second day. I didn't even think about it. But one thing I noticed that we could have done that nobody really did, but we could have, is down there toward where our table was the last year and had been before, those tables were pretty much empty and they had, you know, there's power there. We could have had, we wanted to, you know, go over there and take up those tables the second day anyways, they were empty. Mm. So we could have kind of marched our laptops over there. Cause yeah. And if, if you're, if you're there, you're definitely going to have to buy the, by the uh, Wi-Fi from them because even going outside, I had full bars on my phone, but I couldn't get any data. So you're going to have to get the Wi-Fi from them. But you know, I bought that uh, premium Wi-Fi the first day and it was awful. It wasn't like in previous years either. There were so many people on it or something was buggy about it, but I finally ended up turning it off and went with my my phone connection because it was faster that's interesting because last year you know the, the free wi-fi get was sketchy last year and one of the days i purchased the wi-fi and it was pretty good so there might have been maybe they used a different host this time because it was pretty good last year uh, one other thing i'd like to mention that i was ill prepared for is uh i was going to go out this year initially just simply as a consumer and then my role kind of changed and in, in, into uh covering the instagram angle uh, so I just simply had my phone and I, for the very first time, about half a little over halfway through the first day, I, my phone started overheating and shutting down and not operating properly. 
So uh, granted, my situation was unique. I didn't know going out there that I was going to be covering the Instagram angle. But um, uh, that uh, regardless of, of what you're doing is make sure you have a backup plan for if your primary equipment fails or is not working properly, you have some other way to get what you want. Are you saying you can't always get what you want? Exactly. I try sometimes you get what you need, though. But you got to pay for that. Oh, I'm going off topic. Sorry. Um, yeah, I went. I went out. I I took my my GoPro and I had two spare batteries for that. So I never ran out of out of uh, anything with my with my GoPro, and it didn't it didn't go down on me. So I I mean I did have I did have an audio issue that is probably user induced. On the last the last day, I lost complete audio for uh, one of the interviews I did. So I learned that, you know, have a backup mic, maybe, but it wouldn't hurt or back, you know, some kind of way to back up your sound. It's also um, not a bad idea to watch your videos before you leave, too. Yeah. If you can get a chance, just run them through real quick. Make sure you've got sound and everything. Cause you, yep. In that case, you could go back and hit it again if you had to. Yeah. I also... Uh, <laughs> I also uh, learned that my uh, little shotgun mic is probably not the best thing for for an area like that where there's a lot of background noise. A, a lavalier or something would have been much better. Now, for those of us that don't necessarily know name brands or types, is, is that a brand or is that a type? No, a shotgun mic is like the ones you see that sit on top of cameras and they're and they're directional. They take they take uh, uh, they're pointed like a shotgun, so. All the sound is coming from where you point the and stops probably going to pull this out. It here. would be like a traditional reporter's microphone out at the scene reporting. Uh, no. Okay. No, it's it's, it's, it's like a telescopic so lens as opposed yeah. to a wide angle. There's Snops pulling his. I out. don't know where my road one is. Oh, here's a picture of it. This is a shotgun mic, or this is the one I actually use. It's yeah, that's the. the camera. Yep, the little one, the road mic mini is what I had with me. This and it's one trying to listen just in front of it as far away as it can, right? It's like it's like a spotlight. It's trying to yep. focus just on what's being said in front of it, not from the sides. Not from the sides, not from the back. Now they do still catch some, especially if you if you speak up, because I could, you know, if I was behind him, I could ask question and you could and you could hear it. Um, and what Snob's pulling out here is his is his lavalier setup, which is the little clip on mics. Like they do. Pretty sure. No, uh, I, I've always heard them in terms of, as example, directional and omnidirectional. Obviously, terms change over time, but uh, those little uh, cats, I forget what they're called, but cats, things you put on a microphone. The dead cat, the door, cat. Did that uh, help with anything or not really? Uh, the dead cats are for wind noise, so if you're outside, they, they cut down on the wind noise. Um, and so do the little foam things, but not, not as well as the uh, dead cats do. But uh, yeah, the shotgun is a directional mic. Uh, lava, the little lavaliers there are probably an omnidirectional, but they're so close that they're picking up. You can get condenser, uh, you know, directional lavaliers mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, and that's one thing I learned last year after doing it because I'd use that bigger shotgun mic I have on top of my camera, and it was just there was so much background noise. I said I've got to do something different because there's just no way to get rid of it really. The only thing you can do um, is, is obviously in post-production, like through Audacity or something, you can kind of take a signature of that noise and then filter it out. But it does distort the audio in post-production, but it is better than nothing. Yeah. So like the murmur will be unique and consistent usually, so the software can take that kind of right. path right. and remove most of it. Yeah. Do you find post you've been to both shows? Do you find like a difference in your equipment between um, like the NRA and Tulsa and Shot and the other things you've been to? Oh yeah, um, usually for uh, Wanamaker, I just take my phone and uh, film most of my phone. I won't take the DSLR and all that. I will take a lavalier mic, but a lot of stuff is there's. It sounds crazy. Even at Shot NRA, there's a lot of people, but you can move around a little bit. At Wanamaker, the aisles are so you know close together that having a bunch of equipment 
for me, isn't always the best way to go. Plus you're, something. Talk, plus, you're talking about a gun show, and most people, and most gun shows don't allow media. And so people are in a gun show aren't, you know, the, the people there aren't used to having cameras around, so they don't realize they're bumping into your tripods or whatever, so. I was, I was very, I'm going to turn on the camera here so you can see it, but I was, I was very happy um, with my setup here. Now it's got the little, you know, the tripod if I want to set it down on the table, but I, and GoPro hooked here, I could put my phone um, in here to hold it so I can uh, monitor the GoPro and I could ask, I could also, you know, operate the GoPro from that and then my mic could go right on here but i was very happy with this little setup for the whole thing i th i was gonna say i think uh if in and like he said the backup audio is a, is a plus and you have to have a lavalier mic because we just there's so much background noise you don't realize it till you amplify it with that shotgun mic but i think some live streaming from there would have drummed up some interest we had a lot of people come by and you know, we're trying to explain it, and they, you know, they were interested, but they couldn't quite see it. I think it'd have been neat if they would, uh, if we would, a maybe everybody make like a maybe like a thirty-second clip and put it all together as like a promo, and just play it on a loop on like a laptop that's there for people that come up to the table, so they could kind of see what's going on. Like, oh, well, I see what these guys do, and uh, that, or like if we had like we were going to go live and had like a little sign that says, okay, we're going live at 12. And then like you set up the cameras that might draw a little interest too, curiosity. So I think that would be something to shoot for. I, I think, all, and I think that's a, uh, there's a great ideas. And I think maybe to add on to that is, is if you could get some of those workers clamps or something that you can put lights on. So when you went mm -hmm. live, we put lights on and for no other reason, it might help light it out better, but it will draw attention. Like, what's going on over the lights? And it might, might bring people over to the table. Like you said, if you put live going live, because it would on be the air, only time they've know. seen that there. Exactly. And it would definitely well, draw attention it there because they'll have like, they'll, you know, this has been going on for 65 years. Let's not fool ourselves. Or be, you know, they, they've had NRA there before they host the, 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 the moving oh. or the roving NRA, like, um, what is that collectors like contest that they do yearly and then they've had well all different kinds of youtube channels you know will decide it's worth covering once and they'll you know show they have some of those on their website and then they've had tv shows from like local to national level but what we're giving them is unique because it's consistent and it's oh. multiple cameras and not just like somebody who comes in shines the light and never comes back doesn't fully understand the culture or what's even going on so I want you to value what you're doing, but let's not act like we're the first ones to bring attention to the show or cameras to the show. But did they go live in the corner on a on TV a regular basis? Have. On a regular basis, no. But TV, I'm just saying TV may have. But certainly not what you guys are talking about. Anywhere near the scale yeah. and the intent that you guys are talking about. Cindy did say while I was, you know, I guess I was just in awe of, of something, but she's, she was sitting at the table. And she said somebody had come through and they were doing a live feed for television and the gun channels table was shown on TV. So that's pretty cool. Uh, whether it gets push or not, I don't know, but there was other people there doing kind of the same thing we were doing. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I wanted to throw that out there and, and, and let you guys know that, you know, the table was shown on some kind of TV because her friend was watching it and had mentioned it to her in a text message. So that's pretty cool. Where did they see that? Oh, that's cool. They were watching TV and were like, oh, that's Cindy's table. And then called her. Yeah, and texted right. her. So that's that's pretty cool. I, I wanted to mention that. Uh, I'll get a hold of her and let her and ask her uh, what, what it was on. But uh, I wanted to chime in here. I learned a valuable lesson, and it's never trust your hotel room's clock. I was late both days, and my clock was 30 minutes slow. So always, always trust your phone. Another thing I've learned that was a valuable lesson, if your phone has an update, if you got to update your phone, uh, just like your computer updates, update your phone. I think that really killed me besides YouTube uh, being poop heads and 
not let me stream live. Uh, update your phone. Uh, it took my phone, uh, I think, an hour and a half, to almost two hours to update. And then after it updated, all my stuff was rearranged. Some stuff was missing. Uh, always update your stuff before anything. That way you can get used to how your phone reconfigures itself. Uh, that's really huge, especially if you use your phone like I do or like Ghost does. Uh, to do your, your your filming of of the stuff at Wanamaker, um, I think that's really important to learn uh, the technology you take with you. Uh, I had a Booya mic and it worked fine. Uh, I didn't pick up a ton of noise. Uh, I did an interview with Fort Scott and I looked at it uh, like Gary said before I left just to make sure, and uh, it sounded fine. Uh, there was a little bit of noise, but I kind of chopped that out of there. Um, that's that's really important is to learn is learn the tools that you take because if you don't you could be kind of stuck uh, i did use instagram for a certain amount of time but you only get you, your, your time's limited on instagram i know gweb's caught my little interview spat with uh texas law shield and i'm glad that the 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 veteran that was sitting at that table that introduced me because I'm probably going to go with that for my insurance for, for concealed carry. But uh, that was a lifesaver on that one because like I said, my phone hadn't updated and just taking videos on my phone, there's not a ton of storage space. So now that I upgraded to 5g, uh, I've, I've got a ton more storage space on my phone for videos so oh, come prepare. And plus, I left my battery packs here in Indiana, so that doesn't help. And uh, just learn, learn, learn the technology that you're going with. That way, you don't kind of put yourself in a corner. That's why you see a lot of slideshows on the channel because I took a ton of pictures, but even that space kind of started to get taken up. And as soon as I updated my phone, uh, I took a lot more pictures. So I just want to throw that in there. I, I agree with the technology part. I'd gotten a new gimbal like a, right after SHOT Show, and I kind of sort of fooled with it, and then I was trying to really use it for the first time, like out and about at Jam Davis, and I completely forgot how to attach it to the to the GoPro electronically and to my phone, so I had to sit there and figure that out. So I, I 100% agree. Figure your stuff out before you go, not when well, you're trying what? to use it. Do Excuse I, me. One uh, one thing I learned last November that I kind of did better this year, I thought, was I mainly went around and talked to the people I wanted to do interviews with during the busy time and then told them, hey, you know, you know, talk to them about, can I do an interview with you either later to this evening before the show closes or first thing in the morning? So I went back Sunday morning and got most of my interviews done Sunday morning before the show got real busy. And that was perfect because then I didn't have people tripping over me trying to walk through there, people constantly walking up to the booth while I'm trying to do an interview. It just worked out a lot better for me to do it that way. And during the day, I just, you know, talk, either talked to people or took some B-roll footage or took pictures, stuff like that. See, Did I'm anybody glad. do any interviews of people that were there just as consumers and find out how long they've been going or what they were looking for? Um, I didn't exactly. do it. I didn't do any video. I talked to a bunch of people that have been there, but I didn't interview them. There's a there's some people there that were still really shy to be on camera. Like I was gonna do when I when I bought my uh, that little twenty two. I was gonna like have this guy you know interview and talk about this gun that I was gonna get, but he was like, no, let's not do that. And I'm like, oh, that's totally cool. You know, just let's get the deal done and we can walk away. I mean, there's still some sketchy people there. And that's another thing to keep in mind. Always ask. Just don't go up to somebody's table and start filming. Uh, that will really uh, get at people's goat. Always go up there and introduce yourself and, uh, you know, shake their hand and, and get them comfortable with you. And then enter that process of, well, can I interview you? Can I shoot your table? You know, can I take pictures there? Just don't go up there and, you know, full force, just walk up there and start taking pictures. Uh, people get kind of sad at that. So that's another one to throw in there. Dead air, everybody has to pay a dollar. 
PayPal every time there's dead air. Sorry, I was on the other screen and couldn't unmute because I was trying to do my homework to find out what uh, channel this was on. So uh, basically, I, I, you know, all the the cables that gave me trouble, I just told them I was G Webs and that, you know, that it didn't make any difference. <laughs> it's a good deal. I only had one uh, table where the guy asked me, he says, so, so what are you doing with these photos? And I, I said, I'm, I'm here to help promote uh, the, the gun show and the Second Amendment. And they were and that and that he was cool with that. And then uh, he said, well, if I want to take a look at these pictures, where would I look? And then I, I, I mentioned uh, uh, the hashtag that we were using, and that would be a real quick uh, way to find him on, on Instagram. Um, and he was happy and w w I went on taking pictures. But, you know. It, different stories for different people. I guess part of it is, you know, how you go up there. Part of it is, is you know, you know, the person you're talking to, and there's nothing you can do about stepping on a landmine. Well, I, I told you uh, the story the other day about the guys, uh, the two gals. I was filming in an adjacent adjacent set of tables, and uh, there was these two gals there, uh, you know, sitting behind a booth, and it was basically just you know, regular everyday stuff, I was going to pass them by. And one of the gals asked me about the filming. And I said, they said, you know, are you filming the whole show? And I said, No, we just we just film the stuff that we find interesting, or, you know, we think we'll get our our, uh, our watchers really excited. And uh, the lady, the lady laughingly took offense and said, Well, we're really interesting. And I, I had a think fast. And I said, Well, you know, there's a morals clause in our contract, we can't put anything up that's too exciting. Because you know it's 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 part of the morals clause, and they just they laughed their butts off, and I kept on walking. So, it, you know, the, I, I find a lot of people at the show are really pretty easy going, and a, a lot of fun at that. I did run into one other guy. I was I made the mistake of filming, just just like roll call was saying. I made the mistake of filming before I asked. And the guy was like, so what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm, you know, I'm taking pictures of, of, at that point in time, I was doing my politics reel that hasn't come out yet. And I was taking pictures of all the political kind of stuff, along with some of the more interesting signage. And the guy, uh, the guy said, well, uh, and I showed him my photo badge. He said, well, at least you have a photo badge. And I said, yeah. And if there, if there's a problem, I'll certainly, I won't show any of this stuff. And he was, he was uh, good with that, but he had, he basically had uh, what he call it, uh, what he considered to be copyright material, and he said other people were just walking up and taking the pictures. And when he asked them to stop, they told him to go screw himself. And so he was really, he was really happy that I had the photo badge on, and also that that you know I told him if you don't want us to show any of this stuff, just let us know and we won't show it. So he was he was pretty good with that and let me continue taking pictures. Well, you keep somebody in the loop like that and speak to them and they they usually react way better like just like that because somebody else took advantage of them and then you you come up and talk to them and of course she's open to it so well most of the time they're open to it yeah i, I talked to a guy uh i got his card somewhere uh he he told me a story how one, one year he was there and somebody had a media badge on or or something similar to it and uh they ended up like recording them and whatnot, but then wrote like a horrible story. So he was kind of, you know, standoffish at first when I walked up there and started looking. Cause I, I had my camera in my hand, but I was just looking at his stuff cause he had AR parts and uh, he's looking at me. He tells me the story about some lady that wrote like a nasty article on him and his badge reminded me, reminded him of it. And I, shook his hand i gave him my card my uh, roll call 219 uh, business card and i shook his hand i'm like look man i'm not like that you know i'm pro second amendment you know I, I love it you know i love guns and i'm like but all aside i need parts for my my pistol build that i'm doing uh back home so he gave me some insight and i bought some parts from him so and then i went back and told him i i had snagged a couple of the gunchannels.com cards off the table and I gave them to him 
I'm like, here, this is, you know, this is who I, you know, I'm with at, at the show. And, you know, you need to really go check these guys out. Not only will it help your business, but if you have any more questions, you know, that you want to ask about the show, if you come next year, you know, we won't be in this little bit of a standoffish mode. And he's like, oh, I totally agree, blah, blah, blah. And, and that and it, it ended on a good note, but it kind of kind of took off on, on, on a on a bad track. But we, we righted the ship. So that's always to keep in mind, like some of these people really don't want to be on camera. I mean, some of these people have, you know, five, six thousand dollar guns on the table. So they might not want their picture taken and posted all over the media or social social media, I should say. You know, something so that, real call you, that you said that I, th I think is very important is, and I know some of you already have this, but for those of content providers, either you're here or listening to it, that I think gives you a lot of credibility is what real call mentions is having a business card. Uh, so it adds to, you know, if you happen to have a badge, it adds to another layer uh, of credibility is I, I'm really here to do what I'm saying I'm here yes. to do. Yes. Yes, I uh, I learned that's one of the things I learned there because I didn't get uh, business cards printed up before I went down. They are they have they are ordered, they are made, and they have shipped. So I am ready for the next the next time I go out and need them. Additionally, you can get a NSSF press credentials for twenty five dollars, <throat> and I don't know what you have to do to qualify, but I'm guessing everybody can qualify. And then you can get NRA um, press credentials and for so like uh, Wanamaker, if you really had something that you were really, really interested in pursuing covering and they were really adamantly against it, showing that you're with NSSF, most people in the real industry are going to know what NSSF is, right? Gun sh most gun shops are going to know. Maybe an individual might not know, but NRA surely having credentials with NRA would be sort of like having an NRA training certificate or credential. Right, people are kind of kind of assume that the NRA vetted you already, but I agree with Dano. Business cards are useful tool. Yeah, they're they're clutch. I I think the business card aspect of it, it kind of it breaks up the monotony a little bit, and it kind of makes the person that you're trying to either uh, take pictures of or film or whatever kind of puts them a little bit at ease. Because then they can go back to your channel or whatever social media site you have on your business card and they can look you up and then they know for the next time like, oh, I'll go talk to him. Uh, another thing I wanted to throw out there is uh, what Snob was mentioning about going on Sunday and setting up your interviews. Um, what was really weird about the show is a lot of people packed up on Sunday. Come around noonish, one o'clock, there's a lot of people gone. Uh, I think it, it's hard to gauge, but if you set up times to, before your interviews, you, you, will, you will find it much more easier. Now, me, I lost two interviews because these people packed up and left. Why they didn't, I don't, I don't know. And then the other people kind of, I don't know, they just didn't feel like doing the interview with me. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to contact them uh, because I really enjoy their products and I really want to showcase their products. So it, it, it was kind of weird how everybody packed up on Sunday. But do do like Snob says, uh, set those things up and let them know and get their numbers or get their cards and call them and make sure that it's ready to go. And when you get there, you can get there, uh, do the interview and you can go and hurry up and go on to your next one. Because it can get really it can get really uh, uh, cluttered on Saturday. Saturday's like the day you know that's when the majority of people are going to be there that's when the aisles are going to be packed that's when uh you know people are carrying guns you got to watch out for guns so you don't get hit with them i mean there's there's a ton of people in those aisles and again you know the background noise and you might have to be moving a little bit shifting letting people go by because uh, there's a lot of people that aren't there to do media stuff they're there to buy they're there to consume so uh, just be respectful of it and, and do what Snob suggested. Set these things up. And, and, and if you can get them on Saturday, that makes it all the better uh, because then you can kind of stretch out if you want to consume some of the 
uh, the goodies that are hanging around there on Sunday. That uh, that'll break it break it up a little bit for you to go and buy your stuff. That's what I kind of tried to do today. But you know, I I'm always I'm always in in whole in some aspect. Uh, and what really drives me is when I see Gary Gizzard's video, I see Snob's video. Uh, definitely from Clover and when Ghost goes and sees their video. I don't want to portray it like that, but I really want to learn from it. And that way I don't make mistakes on doing it. So I enjoy watching your guys' content as well because in the long run, some of you guys that did videos, I didn't know those tables existed there. So that's something for me next year to look out for because not only are those people kind of you know relaxed, then I could probably go over there and either buy something cool or, you know, do a quick little photo session with them or interview. That really helps out, too. Uh, so that that that's really cool when you guys put out your content. That I can learn from it. Uh, try not to make the simple mistakes because you guys have already figured that jazz out. So that's really cool. And kudos to everybody uh, that's putting out content from that show. That doesn't also uh, benefit uh uh, the people out there that want to go to the show, but it benefits me and other creators to see how you guys do it. So thank you for that. Well, another thing on the business card aspect of things that I figured out this year and I gave a few people that and uh, some of them that were busy or something, they, uh, I gave them my business card and said, Hey, this has my cell number on it. You know, or the one guy was the radom guy, the Viz radom guy. In my video, I don't know if any of you actually watched that video, but it was a pretty neat guy in his uniform and stuff in there. And he had that whole collection of radon gun. Anyways, but uh, his dad wasn't there at the time. And he said, well, I'd rather, you know, you need to do an interview with my dad. So I was like, well, here's my card. And he called me, you know, an hour later and says, hey, my dad's here. He's ready. Come back. And I did it with another one. I gave him my card and they called me and said, hey, you know, if you want to do one, this would be a good time. So that worked out good, too. No, Woods was wondering what we were. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that's for us and what we're super successful doing. So, has anybody got anything that they thought went really well? I mean, everything I feel like I could have done better, but I thought I had pretty good success this year compared to last year, as far as you know, well, talking to people and stuff like you that. You forgot to put in the explosions in post for our heroes walk. So I know, I know, you could have done better at that. The, um, the table did you get that video ready? Yeah, it's in it's in his ten minute long I, uh, montage. I, yeah, it's in I the whole montage. I've been on I'll, I'll watch uh, it in the morning. You're the star of it. I watched oh, it. Yeah, That's that was one thing. Jumped up. <laughs> that was one thing I liked doing this year that I didn't do at all last year. Was I kind of just made a overview of the show and I took a bunch of different little. You know, people that other people had interviewed or just different people and different things, stuff that wasn't really a whole video in itself and just threw them all into that video, plus a bunch of B-roll of the show. And I thought that was kind of a neat, different aspect of it than what I'd done before. So and, going off of that, has people that have been going to the show multiple times or like Ghost where you've gone to multiple t venues, uh, how does your... Um, your I don't know what to call it. Like your, how does your content change? But how does your, how does you, how do your goals change? Like as you get better and as you accomplish things, you know, once you've, okay, I want to do this and this. Well, once you've done them and you keep going to events, how do you, how do you evolve? Or how have your projects evolved? Um, for, for me, you know, Wanamaker been there several times and been to obviously other industry shows. When I go to Wanamaker, uh, for me, it's it's a lot more fun because yeah, we're there is media covering this gun show, but we're at a gun show. It's not it's not like it's not like it's an industry thing where it could be political or it's business. You know, when I go to Wanamaker, I go there to kind of spread what gun shows are for people that have never been to one. It's much less the biggest one in the world. 
but every time I go to Wanamaker, I kind of go try to do something different where, you know, one time, you know, was, we have so many other people that are covering different things. I might go there and look for, um, you know, AR parts or AK parts. And the next time I'm going to go there, I'm going to look for targets or I'm going to look for something specific for me. And what that does is that helps me kind of organize myself. Now, obviously, if I'm walking down the aisle and I see something that's really just really cool, then I'll video that. But I try to go with like a theme for that particular show because there's so much there to look at. If you go there and just say whatever, it could overwhelm you. But I go there looking for specific types of products. Anybody else's uh, techniques or goals about changed as you attended multiple shows, Gary? Uh, yeah, uh, techniques change. I mean, you learn things after a while. You learn that Saturday morning, that first morning, you got to make your contacts right then and there and get most of the people lined up that you're going to interview and set a schedule. When would be a good time? Your your booth is busy now. Would later today work? Would Sunday work? Let's set up a time. You know, and then I had a sheet with basically my schedule for that afternoon and all Sunday and everything else. But it, you make those contacts early, and uh, that helps a lot. And uh, like Real Call said, having the cards... In fact, if you have um, like a shirt, I was wearing a shirt that said Gizzard Gary too. I was pretty visible. This was my brand. This is who I am. I'm not just some Hoosier running around the show. Uh, so, uh, some man, Hoosier. Was that an attack on roll call? I, I feel so like that was that? a dig at roll call. Gizzard. It's so, an entire state of people. I mean, so he I mean, goes, he. He goes and eats a chicken sandwich yep. and then insults me. Yep. He's he'll, a savage. He'll eat, he'll eat his own on two different levels. But, yeah, stuff like that. Uh, other things, and I mentioned this in the side, uh, it's important to make sure and bring the stuff you need. It's also important not to bring too much stuff with you because you'll be having to store this stuff. You're going to have to lug it everywhere you go. And uh, one of the things I thought might be helpful for next time, I said, we ought to get one of those portable plastic shelves like you can buy for like your garage so we can put it together and maybe put it back behind the booth so we can store like backpacks and stuff like that. I'm okay with that. I like that idea 100%. However, metal and hopefully Snob already has something like that that he can drop all the crap off of it for the weekend and bring it in because like, Metro shelving would be ideal for that, right? Wire restaurant shelving. Super strong. Somebody like Wright could bring his ammo boxes. Somebody could buy ammo. It would just, that's an awesome idea. You can get a metro shelving on wheels. I don't have none of that, but I got one of those big plastic ones. But look at I all think the that's Gary talked about. I know those things work. Yeah, I'm that's not. what I had in mind. But yeah, metal would work too if you could get it. Yeah, those metal wire ones. I know what you're talking about. I don't have any, but those are really nice and they look a lot nicer. And, well, yeah, and also just the weight of trying to get from the car into the show with with plastic versus metal, plus plus your backpack of stuff. Well, the thing is, those shelves like what Snob has, and I think what Gary's talking about, those like the, the circular uprights fold into the the recesses in the shelf, right? So you're really just carrying in like three or four shelves, and then they just kind of snap together like big Legos or link yeah. them up. And that stuff, truthfully, if you really wanted to do it, we could have done that on Friday. Well, and that's part of it. And, and now it sounds like, you know, if we want to get into the table, um, first off, thanks to the people that made up the table. It looked like it was really successful, especially, you know, in the location we had this year. But um, it sounds like we definitely want to ask for a table with electric since they don't owe us nothing. Um, maybe we should spend a bit of time this year before the next event, before the next Tulsa show, and, you know, give them a reason to give us that electric and to give us... Uh, Either this, you know, it sounds like we like the location, but we also want the, the 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 resource of the electric. So we need to, you know, and I think in and ask for that, right? I think I think part of what could go to that is, you know, Clover Clover's got the hashtag that we're all that we should all be using. I've been using it, and that he can he can go. You know, he was I believe he was going to do that, so he had something to show him, so he could collate it all, and then be able to show him that is you could. 
you know, show them this and show them how long we're putting st stuff out after Wanamaker is that some of this could have gone out while we, while it was going on. And I, I think for, for those that, that are in, uh, interested in looking at what's out there so far, and only part of what we've taken has been posted, uh, it's uh, hashtag GC Tulsa 419. All right, so let's talk about hashtags for a second. So, correct, the hashtag that we're using this time around ties all this stuff together from this time around. <clears throat> but hashtags are much more powerful than simply stapling all of our images together. So the hashtag is definitely not need, it does not need to be used independently. And you know, your posts should all have ideally uh, hashtags that you know, are appropriate for them and as many as possible. If our goal is to grow as channels, uh, to expand our reaches as projects, and then to, you know, uh, promote and enhance the show that gave us the opportunity, then simply hashtagging it with our like coded thing that staples them together will is not enough. So definitely, if you're not fluent in hashtags, if you're not super comfortable with them. This is a great opportunity. So in other words, a, a picture of a revolver and some other stuff, you've got, you know, whole bunches of revolver, revolver life, revolver collection, wheel gun. You know, there's lots of hashtags that can be used. There's lots of strategies on how to pick them. And then uh, including the one that tags all our shows together. Uh, so what I'm getting at is if, uh, let's say we just showed them that hashtag. Well, depending on what people used, we'd need to go manicure that hashtag first. Right. So if somebody posted a picture of, I don't know, something like a restaurant or just from something from the hotel with that hashtag, the Wanamaker isn't going to care or consider that helpful or understand even what might that, you know, that might be. So we don't want to only use one hashtag or be restrained to only one hashtag. So maybe having two hashtags that let us filter everything from Gun Channel's April. And then additionally, stuff that was from the tables, like gun show table or gun show, featured gun show item. You know, there's all different ways to make hashtags. So there's, well, there's a strategy there. There's several different Tulsa gun show or want to make your arm show hashtags that are pretty popular on Instagram that I tried to tag most of my stuff with too. Perfect. You mean just ones that have kind of established their over time and other yeah. people, not gun channels. Oh, yeah. Other people going to the show have kind of used, yeah. The misspellings of want to make her. There's an oh, opportunity there. And one other thing I'll throw in there about the table and the electric thing. The electric was nice, but at the same time, we only have one table. There's not really room to set up and do anything. So I think the location trumps electric because we can all use portable chargers if we need them. Yeah, I think that's a valid uh... And like I said, by Sunday, there was plenty of choices where you could park at an empty table and set up your laptop. I mean, we sat there and ate, you know, and stuff at empty tables. I think the table location was pretty good. I mean, when whenever you position the table in front of the, the tactical girls, I think that's a winner. I mean, there's a lot of people that went over there and visited them. And they did make their way around that table. Uh, we were right behind uh, Grizzly Ammo, too. Uh, I think that was a good spot, and it was a good location with other tables that really really sparked the interest of the people that were there. So uh, I believe I, I like that spot. There was a high-traffic area, and it was still by the restrooms, so you could still go there. And we still had some room there. Uh, to maneuver around and, and put our bags there if we wanted to take a break or whatnot. So I was happy with the location. I thought it was great. Uh, high high volume of traffic coming through there. Uh, the table looked fantastic. Um, I, I like it, man. I, I well, totally like it and dig that spot. We got one thing about the table being there versus behind the safes, you know, that Grizzly Ammo had ammo set up all the way around their table, and they had good prices on ammo, so a lot of people were walking around there getting the ammo and stuff. Whenever we're behind the safes, who goes around and looks at the back of the safes? I mean, really? Well, so there's that, that and uh, when uh, when we were down by by the bathrooms and the exit and and the uh, exit is is when people are in the mode of okay, I have a destination in my head, whether that be restroom or exit. That's their pace picks up, and that's where they're going. 
when you're further away from those distractions or or con, uh, concessions, uh, like, like, like the grizzly ammo or whatever it was, people have what I call the mall walk. And from sitting at the table, trying to engage the general public from a couple of years ago versus just a, a week plus whatever it was ago, uh, I got we got a lot more public engagement with people walking by and say, and I say, hi, we're, we're, we're gun channels and we're an online community of people interested in firearms from all sorts of different perspectives. And then if they seem to slow down, I might add a little bit more to it. But I got a lot more public engagement about what is gun channels with the location we had just last week versus the table we had uh, where people were walking a little faster with the destination in mind down by the exit con concession and bathrooms. Well, my personal opinion, what amount of time I spent at the table, which wasn't a ton because there was enough people there that plenty of people were sitting at the table and I didn't have to this year versus November. But I felt like we had 10 times the traffic as we did in November at that table. I mean, that was just my opinion. And traffic that actually was stopping, interested, asking questions, stuff like right. that. Right. And those squirt guns, very popular. Very, very popular. Yeah, I handed I handed some out to some little With, kids in a um, stroller. And I think adding the, the gun safety rules onto it is a mega plus. Yeah, that was very good. We stole Very that thing. from Cheryl and Dan Todd at AZ Radio or AZ Gun, AZ Firearms in Avondale, Arizona. Because even if somebody doesn't have kids, you know they they they, they have nieces, they have nephews. You know, there's there, there's there's always hold on, somebody. hold on, Mister Throwing Away Money. Those are so that little kids can go home from a gun show with a gun in their hand, and you're giving them to adults who claim to have kids somewhere else. Okay. Like it's not snobs money. <laughs> but we're engaging the general public on multiple things. One of them is gun channels. Another one is the Second Amendment. No, I don't remember anybody ever suggesting that we're there to promote gun channels. If you guys want to, that's your thing. But the uh, getting okay, giving well, kids a, to walk a giant home cloth that thing. says gun channels on the table. So, uh, giving the kids though something is what those squirt guns are all about so i hope you were the one that had to tell all the little kids that showed up later that said oh i heard there was free squirt guns for us and you were like oh no i gave those to older people who claim to have we did not run out of squirt guns till sunday afternoon i apologize to all the little kids that showed up sunday afternoon oh <laughs> yeah but that that does you know make the, the comment we missed out on the candy this year we didn't have the attractive bowl of candy for the adults. No, and I realized that, but I was like already there, and then I didn't even think about it on Sunday. Okay, so we got two things. More squirt guns and a big old fat bowl of jelly. We had a bowl of candy last year, just cheap candy. Of course, I yeah. sat there and ate half of it. I'm just going to be honest. but Yeah, I actually had to go find candy on other tables. It was really sad. At 4,500 tables, there's you could have easily played trick or treat out there. There had to be every t five, ten tables, not even every five to seven tables. I bet had candy. Well, I tried playing trick or treat, but I tried to walk off with a python, and they kind of chased me down. You, you didn't. Get it. You didn't get away with the python? I got mine. Mm -hmm. Should have been quicker. Mm -hmm. Who wants those new guns anyway? <laughs> so um, as far as gun channels, the team or gun channels, the group of people collaborating at the show, um, we talked a bit about, or Sarge, I think, brought up the idea of establishing times. That's that's a tough one. I think Ghost and Sarge, you guys have seen what it's like at shot where physically we're in different places. It's tough. Tulsa is a little more focused, but can still be tough because like Dan likes to say, herding cats, you know, we're all adults. Sometimes we have uh, what spouses, brothers, uh, kids. You know, others involved that aren't necessarily part of the gun channels thing and might want some actual time with, you know, the humans that are there with them because uh, they're on vacation together kind of thing. So 
I don't know. That's why I am hoping that this evolves. I mean, there is no correct answer. I don't think there's some recipe that we're just is eluding us, right? We're we're trying to develop something that might not be able. You know, there might. I don't think there is a perfect anything. So with that in mind, again, uh, looking back as you now people with some or multiple experience at this thing. You know, so that we're not here all night just chatting about whatever. Just to focus it back. Um, anything else we can do as a group as people who are all efforting in the real same direction here to to get this tighter efficienter better stronger i've got one thing it kind of goes along that and i'll throw it out there one thing that works out good for me having my wife there is i can make her be my camera woman and i realize not everyone's able to have that but maybe do like you know, maybe team up instead of having to try to use a tripod or something like that. If you're wanting to be on the video with the people, you know, or talk to them, you know, maybe team up. Cause I'm sure most everybody there would be willing to team up with somebody else, you know, to help you do an interview. Cause it's not like you're interviewing people the whole show, you know, you may do five, six, seven interviews during the show. So, you know, that's one word of advice I'd give. If you can team up with somebody to help you tape them, it can be tremendously helpful also. Then you don't have to worry about people tripping over your tripod in the aisle or stuff like that. And I guess that's also an invitation for someone who might not be a creator who is interested in assisting or helping or becoming. Does yeah, absolutely. A transition, a good apprenticeship or a good whatever. Yeah, it's a good way to learn. And I mean, that's kind of one thing I used Tulsa for in November was, you know, I had no clue what I was doing as far as interviews and all that. I just threw myself out there and started doing it, you know, and, uh, you know, I felt like I did a lot better this time, which I'm hoping helps me when I go to NRA in two weeks. So, okay, that's a good thing then. Uh, anything you guys are going to be able to do at NRA in a couple of weeks from Tulsa? Anything you learned that's fresh in your head? I like Dano's idea a lot. Those shirts are ten dollars, and they promote Tony. I don't think Tony's going to be able to get to NRA, is he? And he's right down the street. Uh, ten bucks and any size up to 5XL and uh, bright blue, awesome color. Blue is the best color, and you are promoting 2A for everyone. Love it. I love that idea, Dan. Anyway, uh, anything else we can, you know, that we've learned from Tulsa that we can apply to, or you all can apply to NRA in a minute or two here? Mm, I think, you know. Uh, plenty of time for cards. Everybody got cards? What about something else, like? There's obviously some confusion slash discrepancy in awareness or whatever we want to call, like, you know, we're not on on um, whatever. We're not marching in lockstep for gun channels, which is awesome. I honestly don't want us all to be on lockstep necessarily, but uh, maybe even just, you know, feel free to offer suggestions to a way to more efficiently explain what it is. You guys have talked about the table being successful and... Um, I was hoping that we can get some of the people that were sitting at the table. <clears throat> I didn't give links to Snob's wife because I don't have her email, I don't think. And I just don't, in bed. I don't know what Armenthia's email address is, I don't think. Although I think she sent me a picture one time. I just don't know what it is to find it in my old emails. But anyway, uh, so I didn't give them direct links, but I suspect they were probably sitting at the table, or whatever, at least when they were sitting at the table, a kid walking up to them is going to have a different you know, say stuff differently than might say to, to Cycle Camp or, or Dano or somebody. So, um, and then they're going to get different stuff than, I don't know, we didn't have any kids there this year, but younger people or different people, you know, that. so I'm curious to see what kind of conversations happen at the table. Um, but anyway, I guess first I asked anything you guys can apply to NRA or that you're going to take to NRA and do better. Well, one thing is, uh, and it's kind of that, is I talked to a lot of people there, you know, whenever I was talking to these vendors and stuff that were there, I was like, oh, you're going to be at NRA, you know, see, you, there. you know, I'll try to go by and see them there and talk to them. And then one of them I was talking to, which was the guy from Wild West Guns in Las Vegas. He had another guy there and I forgot his name. I've got his card somewhere in here, but uh, he's like, man, I'd love for you to come by and see me at NRA. You know, he's uh, something ammo, but he's also sells suppressors. Now he's just coming out with suppressors. He's like, yeah, come by, talk to us at NRA. His name was Cameron something. He was, I guess he's somewhat famous in the gun industry. I just don't know who he is. 
but super nice guy and wanted me to come by and see him. And then there was a couple others that said, come by and see us at NRA too. You know, we'll have a bigger booth there. We'll have this or have that, you know? So that was kind of neat. I've never been to to the NRA show. Uh, I'm kind of stoked to see how it is and what what it's all about. I've never been there. Uh, this is in my home state, so I'm hope I'm hopeful I'm hopefully hopefully hoping that they're going to uh, put a good show on. And I've never I've never gone to one of these NRA conventions. I'm not a everybody knows I'm not a huge fan of them. But I'll I'll go and, and check it out and, and see how it is. If anybody's got any kind of insight on, on what to expect when you go to the show, that would be uh, really informative uh, for people that have never been to the show or know what it's about. Are you able? Did you need time? Did you want to restate any of that so you could? Get all the notes down. Well, how helpful. Roll call. Did you hear back from NRA yet? I uh, no, I haven't heard back from them yet. So I'm hoping to hear back from them. You will. Uh, it it might take a couple of days. Hopefully. Why did you uh, send it in to them? I believe I sent it in Tuesday. Okay. Um, email me uh, tonight or tomorrow, and I'll give you a direct email to someone that will help. I gave it to him. Yeah, he gave me that. Or he did. Okay. Yeah, so, and that's who I. It usually takes a couple of days, but uh, yeah. she'll take she care. took care of mine almost immediately. You know, as soon as I did it, I think I sent it on a Thursday or Friday, and got it on a Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. Handled yeah. so. No, I mean, you know, and and I think that. I mean, real call, I think you know my stance is on the NRA, but understand that it's two separate things, basically. You have the NRA annual meetings and then the ex the exhibitor show. So, I mean, obviously, when you go into the exhibit and you go to the show side of things, there's obviously NRA posters, and the NRA obviously has a big-ass stage. That they're going to be doing their thing, but it's, it's not like, you know, you're there – because you're at the exhibit, you're supporting the NRA. I think what you're doing at the exhibit, you're supporting the industry. And this is an industry show that if you talk to most of the companies, they enjoy NRA much more than they do SHOT Show because it's a little more laid back. But two, you also have the general public side of things. So uh, you don't have that at SHOT Show. The, the NRA show is is a very good show it's it's a little more laid back but the general public's there now that might bring some logistical problems with filming and, and all of that because the general public doesn't really necessarily know how to act when someone's doing an interview around them but you're going to see the companies much more engaged at the nra i think because they're literally speaking directly to the consumers a lot of times when they're there. So I think you're going to enjoy it going there with open arms, open eyes, open mind and understand that, you know, yes, we're there to promote these industry people or whatever, but you're also there to maybe see how the general public react to new products from industry instead of going from the gun shop. They see it from the show and from the booze themselves. So that's always a cool interaction to watch as well. Don't tell me to go there open arms. I'll start hugging everybody. Oh, uh, Lord. Oh, That's what it's all about, man. I'll start giving out hugs. <laughs> I gave them out. I gave them out at Tulsa. I'll give them out here in my home state. Well, and that's also, you know, you brought up a good point there, Ghost, with the general public and doing interviews around them. That's something you learn a lot from in Tulsa. You know, how to deal with people walking into your tripod or walking right in the middle of your shot or walking right up there and talking during your thing. So, you know, you've got kind of some experience dealing with that just from doing it in Tulsa. Yeah. It's, uh, have you been, to, have you ever been to an NRA show? I've been to an NRA show, not as media, but I've been to okay, the NRA So you've show. been there. But you know what I'm saying is when you go to a gun show, people are there, kind of quote unquote, window shopping, but they're there to buy usually. They're there looking for something. 
the NRA show, yes, you can buy there, but most of the general public, they utilize this is to see the new new and upcoming products from these companies that they know and love and all that. So, um, yeah, they're, they're going to be there. Like you said, they're going to be there. They're going to be touching. They're not going to be aware that you're they're getting in your shot. They don't care about making noise. Literally doing an interview last year, and a kid picks up the gun from the guy's hand and starts, you know, messing with it, and you know, right in the middle of a shot. It is what <laughs> it is. So just be prepared for that. Um, but I think what you'll also find is that the audio is going to be a lot better at NRA than it is at Wanamaker because you're not going to have. Um, you're going to have a massive amount of people, but it's not going to be cramped inside those really small aisles, you know. Now, then again, it also, I can't tell you um, how Indianapolis is going to have it set up so it very well could be tight aisles. I don't know. Well, it's 15 acres, so it's bigger than the Tulsa. There's, uh, I don't know how much of that the trade show. There's a law in the books that any show in Indianapolis has to be wide enough for at least two Indy cars to drive down it. <laughs> Well, there you go. So, so we're good to go then. We're good then. Yeah. Well, another thing you get the benefit of audio wise is they have a lot of carpeting in NRA. Most of the booths have carpeting and there's all the other stuff to absorb some of the sound. It's not just all there. Oh, and beyond that, most of the booths that know what they're doing are going to have a little area set up for filming. They're going to have a backdrop a lot of That's time. That's true. Yep. But the logos, they're going to have like a you know quieter corner or something. And I'm thinking wearing logos and stuff is a better opportunity at shot or I mean at shot or I guess it's NRA to uh, meet up with people who are viewers right because they might go to Tulsa but NRA draws people from around the country and well, you guys already said much stuff. you guys you guys need to stop talking up the NRA because you're making me want to go sweet talk the wife into let me go up to that you want me to talk to her for you I'll talk to her for you Maybe if you get on a bus, then you can find somebody who's driving up there. <laughs> There's still time to e-beg. Um, we can get a crap <laughs> going. You want to take a vacation? Other people have money. Let's make this happen. Just try not to swear at all the potential donors beforehand. <laughs> I thought you left, Dano. Sarge did I was back. Dano said be right back, and that was like one second ago, so I didn't know how he got Well, back Dano there. does that. He tells you he's leaving, and then he just magically shows up the next day. That's true. I heard him say he was going home. That is true, but I was tired. <laughs> he forgot where he was going. Maybe I just meant I wanted to be home. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to start the Daily Gun Show up here, and do that uh, i wanted to say thanks to the people that showed up and participated in this one um it's all about you know growing and making these things steps to uh a different thing in the future so uh it's awesome you guys were talking about it in gary's chat earlier uh, about the whole idea of youtube changing their policy just before the show and i'll say it again i mean they're going to change. We know it. I'm glad they did it. I'm glad they did it in the way they did because y'all are up to the challenge and you'll adapt and overcome. We'll be stronger. The audiences will be more, have more ability at the end of it all. We'll be less reliant on a platform that hates our property and hates the laws that we appreciate. And uh, that's better for everybody. It's better for our country. So thanks everybody for putting in the effort and for not just going on vacation, but instead Realizing that we all have value and our uh, contributions to the conversation uh, are important and you guys are taking an extra step to share your experiences and and additionally taking time to, to collaborate and to you know share so that others hopefully get inspired and and join in the, the concept in the future. So uh, we'll start the Daily Gun Show here in a bit. Um, tomorrow is Saturday. So no more caliber corner if somebody wants to start a Saturday show. It looks like there's a, a place in the schedule for you. Otherwise, Rick will have Rick's life as I see it. Midday tomorrow, we'll be doing a two-way workshop. Snob's got a show. Who's to, who's tomorrow night? Obnoxious? Sarge. Sarge is running tomorrow night. And then uh, you got all the Sunday lineup. So uh, if you like live stuff, there's plenty of it over at gunchannels.com, a community made up of people that like to be part of this conversation on guns. Check it out.